Hi guys, welcome back to our 10th Laravel Code Hub tutorial. In this tutorial, like we mentioned last time, we're gonna be we're gonna over we're gonna go over the uh, basically validating on the post page. So when we post something, we should put some you know validation just to make that happen. So let's go ahead and log in just so we can view the post. And I'm gonna use the user I used from last time, I think, which was J Smith. Once I log in, I will click on the ask question link. If I can remember the J Smith at Gmail. I'll have to log in. I'm not remembering the user, so that's gonna be let me just go to the database and make sure I have the correct user from the one I was using because I think J Smith might not be in my database. So if I go to our database users I don't have any users so I might have deleted I'm gonna go register very quickly I'm gonna put a name the email and the password and this will log me in so I will need to log in and once it does that I see the question so here currently we're not returning any errors or anything like that and in order to make this happen, to fix this, what we want to do is basically um, go ahead and make a request and fix that in order to make the, um, we, we need to do some validation on the back end. We'll click post, let's say we want to have a minimum length that they could have for the body. Let's say they have to put at least like 10 characters. Same thing for the title and same thing for the category. Right now, we don't have any categories populated. We wrote the code that for that last time. The reason is, is because I, I think I don't have any categories, I removed those from my database. So let me just add the category very fast. So we can have, I'm gonna add uh, five categories here. I'm just gonna do a PHP, CSS, HTML, and JavaScript, and maybe C++. Go there. All right, we see those in our database now. They're there. If I reload this page, I should see those populated in the drop down. I see those. Now I'm going to go ahead and open the uh, command line. Go to your XAMPP folder, navigate there. So I'm going to do C XAMPP HT docs and then code hub. And then in here, we're going to run a command php artisan make request. And I'm going to call the request create post request this is the request that I, this is the name I will give the request you can call it anything you want because this will be responsible for the post creation this will be the valid the validation part okay so I have mistyped something here request I mistyped request so let me make sure I spelled that correctly okay so now that it is being created successfully under here in our sublime I'm gonna go under HTTP and I see a request folder here and this new request I created. The authorize, we're just gonna return true. We just want the user to be logged in, so we don't need to authorize anything else. So they won't be able to view this page unless they're logged in. So we can simply return true. Now, for the rules, what I wanna do is we wanna return error or anything like that. So to do that, you need to pass the parameter. So the name, whatever you call this field, and our field name was title. And in here, I'm just gonna type, the title has to be required. And I'm gonna give it a min of let's say one character. This is an example. You guys can change this to anything you want. And a max of let's say for this tutorial, I'm gonna give it a max of let's say 30 characters. Next, we have a category input. So for the category, I'm just gonna make it required. And we also have a body input. And for the body, I need it to be required. And I need it to have a min of, let's say, uh, uh, 10 characters. So what this will do is, when we submit the post here, it will basically check for these rules. So make sure the title is coming in. Make sure it's at least 
one the min is one actually i'm going to remove the min actually yeah just leave them i'm going to remove the min from here because it doesn't need myself. i'm just going to leave a max of 30. so it's going to check if it's if it's coming in and basically if it's a 30 and if it's a 30 or basically it cannot pass 30 because the max it has to be a, a, a less than 30 and all the string that is coming in and the category has to come in and also the body you can add a lot of additional rules here that then you can get a, a list of all the rules if you just go to laravel.com and click under the request type or authenticate uh, yeah uh, under requests you can see uh, all the validation rules or you can sorry you can click on validation and you will see all the rules that you can add here you will have a list of all the rules for this tutorial we're just going to have simply we're just going to make them required we're not going to check for months here now to to put this at work or put it at use we have to go in our controller and uh, import this there so we can use it so in here we gotta type use the request right so we're gonna do use app and we gotta see the folder structure here right so it's under app and then it's http right so we have http and then after that we have um, the request folder so on the request and then whatever you call this the controller which i call the create post request simply i'm gonna under here in the post instead of this being a request this is going to be a create post request and now the validation here will happen by default so when basically when the somebody clicks on the post what it would do first it will go here it will make sure that all the rule pa all all the rules pass and once it does that then it's going to continue restoring it so if i just don't put anything here and i go ahead and hit submit well i have the html but let me put something here and let me put like as here and um, this should not insert because it should fail so we see nothing happened it came back and if you go in our database we can validate that nothing was inserted either so nothing will insert it but we cannot see the error now to to do the error thing to display the errors we got to go ahead and uh, write some code for that so under the views here or sorry resources views under layouts I'm gonna to go to partials and I'm gonna hit a new partial and I'm gonna call it form errors sorry let me save this one save as and I'm gonna call this one uh, form errors that blade PHP and in here we're gonna type the if using the blade format session errors get errors not errors all we want to do here i'm going to put the and if here just to close this loop this uh, sorry conditional i'm going to put a div let's give it an id of form errors that way we know that this is the where all the errors will go that we get back from uh php I call it errors. Let me just call it form errors. It makes more sense. And I'm gonna give it a class, and the class will be BG Danger. And this is a Bootstrap class. It will just make the background red, or slightly red. I mean, it will make. And now I'm gonna put a list, unordered list. And within here, in the elements themselves, what we want to do. Before we even do this, we gotta do a for each. So for every error we get back, because we could get multiple errors back, not only one. For each, and then we gotta type again session. Get errors. And we wanna get all the errors, right? So we're gonna do the all, and this will give us all the errors. And then we can loop through them one by one. And then we can just say here error. And then using this, Make sure you end here the end for each. And within here is where you can print out the errors one by one. And all you gotta do is just using the blade, of course, templating here, I'm gonna print out the error. All right, so what this should do here is once we get an arrow back, it should go ahead, so the arrows get saved on the session and they call it errors. So let me make sure I spell this right. It's supposed to be errors. 
All right, so now that's better. Right? So basically, in, this, in the session, they store the errors. And here, we can use session get to get those errors that are stored there. And then we can use a loop to go ahead and loop around them and display all the errors that are coming back to us in this unordered list. And we use this built-in uh, bootstrap uh, BG danger, which will make the background danger uh, red color just to show that there are errors. Next thing we need to do is just in our view, the post view here. So we need to go under views, pages, and then question here. And we need to include this. So I'm going to include this under our thing here. I'm going to do the under our nav bar. I'm going to include layouts. Layouts dot partials dot form errors. Now that we have included that there, let's go back, refresh the page, put something small here, and let's see what we get back. And we get the form error here. As you see, guys, we said the body must be at least 10. The reason we're getting that is because we told them that the minimum required is 10. You can change this any way you want. If you want to get multiple errors back, let's say I'm going to make this more than 30 characters. Now I should get two errors back saying the title must be greater or might not be greater than 30 and then that's now let's go ahead and do a little bit of styling here just to make this errors look slightly better we can remove uh, some of these things if you guys want or we can leave it that way so simply i'm going to go ahead and modify the css here but uh, to do that i'm just going to open under public css i'm going to create a new file and I'm going to call this one style.css. I'm going to save it. And in here, let's go ahead and put some CSS for the uh, for the form. So remember, the form ID was form errors. And in the form errors, what we had, we had an unordered list and also the list items themselves. So the first thing we need to do here is we need to type form errors. And I'm going to do list first child and then here we can apply our styling for the list items themselves so I'm just going to give it some padding and here you can play around with these numbers guys you don't have to follow uh, you know what I'm doing here but so I'm going to give it a padding top of 15 pixels I would do for the first child and then after that I'm going to do form errors and if you don't know how to do some of these things guys you can go up on the bootstrap side or you can ask me, you can leave comments and I can try to answer and I will try to answer them in the best way possible. All right, so you can play around with the padding and all those other things after the video if you guys want, or you can play during the video as well. Padding top. For the remaining of the items here, I want to do the padding of a five pixels. And I'm going to go outside of this. Another one, form errors. That is the ID that we give our form. So form errors and then we're going to do li and the last item now so we're going to do last child what we want to do here in the last time let's give it the padding bottom so i'm going to give it a bottom padding of 15 pixels to match the top and let's add form errors for the unordered list here and then for the unordered list, I want to do a list style. So we're going to give it a style for the list and no style. So we don't want, uh, basically what this will do is we'll remove those uh, dots or points or bullet points next to each list item. And we're going to give it some left padding. So padding left. Because the reason we're putting it under UL here is because we want this styling to apply to all the list items. Them. Anything that's inside that UL tag. All right. So now that we have done this, and I put a dollar sign here, it shouldn't be a dollar sign, it should be a hashtag. Okay, and now we need to include that styling. So let me close on these windows here. Final step is go ahead and include that styling. So inside of our main here, master main, go ahead and include that one in here. And I'm just gonna copy this. Make sure you include that after the bootstrap here. So I'm just going to type 
I'm going to type the full path here. I'm going to do localhost code hub public CSS. And here we call it style.css, right? Save it. And let me go ahead and just refresh this and do the same test again. So I'm going to put a bunch of things, select a category, put a minimum here just so I can get two errors back. And let's see if our styling worked. And you see here, our styling looks a little bit better. So this was, we got the errors to work, guys. We got them to show. Again, you can put a lot more validation there. Just to see what validation rules are available in the built-in Laravel, you can go ahead and, and you can also use your own custom. You can create custom validation, but that is a little bit more advanced. But for all the rules that you can use for validation in Laravel, you can go to laravel.com uh, and you can click on the validation in the in the left hand side uh, and uh, you will see all the rules available uh, that you can do. So now let's go ahead and make sure like this gets stored. So let me go ahead and put test post. So this means the requirement. Let's make this a little bit longer than 10, than 10 characters. And I'm going to say this is a test post. And I'm going to put something like that and make it HTML, post it. And now we should see it go in our database and, and it will redirect back to the post page on the posts here, refresh it, and we see the post make it in. So that was this tutorial, guys. I hope you liked it. And we're going to go ahead and next tutorial, we can we will go ahead and do some validation for the login and the, also the registration forms as we did not handle those in the previous tutorial. So thank you for watching this tutorial, guys. And again, stick around for the next tutorial.